Excuse me. I'm not a cop. I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. I run a wholesale plumbing supply business. I'm here for a convention. All right, next up is Welcome to the Rileys. This is a well-acted drama with three terrific performances from James Gandolfini, Melissa Leo, and Kristen Stewart, who I believe this is the fourth, maybe even fifth appearance she's made on my show this year, and probably close to ten, I'd say, overall, since I started doing it. That includes the Twilight films, obviously. But, uh, yeah, she's quite a prominent fixture on the show, and uh, I don't mind. I actually enjoy her. Uh, and um, this, this is a movie, however, that it suffers from a subpar script, and, it's, and sadly, it is what kind of hinders what could have been a really tr tremendous film and doesn't give it what it deserves. Now, Gandolfini and Leo play Doug and Lois, the Rileys aforementioned in the title there. And this is director Jake Scott, actually son of Ridley. Um, they are shattered by the loss of their teenage daughter years before. Doug, who owns a plumbing supply business, occupies himself with a standing affair with a waitress after his weekly poker game and sneaking cigarettes in the, if you will, in his garage. Lois can't even muster such casual betrayal. She can no longer even leave their Indianapolis home, which somehow just seems emptier with her in it. Um, they keep their daughter's bedroom preserved as if it were a museum. Uh, we've seen that in many films. A symbol of their own inability to move forward in, in grief. They are just completely marred in, in what, uh, what has happened. But um, then Doug goes to New Orleans for, a, I guess you say, a convention and meets Mallory, played by Kristen Stewart. Now, she is a run, runaway, underage uh, stripper who moonlights as a hooker. Now, uh, energized by a sense of purpose, I guess you could say, uh, Doug sees something here. He sees, like a, I guess you could say, a missing puzzle piece that, uh, if you will, in his life. Uh, and um, he, he, tells, um, he tells Lois later on that he doesn't know when or if he'll ever be home and moves into Mallory's rotting dump of a house. Yes. And, uh, it, and this is really, you think you know where this is going, but you don't. There's no love affair here. Mallory is confused because Doug has no interest in her, um, I guess you could say, as, um, as a, as in that way. And uh, I guess you could say, because, well, she, that's just how every man sees her. But he just wants to fix up the place. But despite, you know, uh, despite everything else, he doesn't want to fix her, not, not necessarily. Doug knows uh, that there are limits to what he can do for this girl. He knows that there's some parts of her that he just can not trust. So he says he can't help her in that aspect. So why try kind of aspect? But you can see it's an obvious substitute for his daughter. Um, and really, that's not that's not handled with much salt here, even much surprise. And again, that's a, but again, that's to be expected. And I kind of like that aspect. But meanwhile, Lois, after you know years of debilitating you know a personality, decides that she'll get in the car that she hasn't driven in who knows how many years and drive to New Orleans. And now there's a weird, uh, I guess you could say, a weird humor weird humor kind of scene where you the laugh or kind of like half smile like that, like, eh, or, you know, whatever. But uh, she she reacquaints herself with the perils of driving, but despite the unlikely nature of such the journey, uh, Leo gives um, Lois a plucky determination. And Melissa Leo is a really good actress. If you, if you haven't seen the movie Frozen River, where she was nominated for an Oscar for two years ago, uh, please check it out. Uh, she's tremendous in that film. And she's also really good here, too. But once Doug and Lois are reunited, this is where the film shifts gears, and this is where my big problem lies. Whereas before the story centered on Doug and Mallory, with Lois on the outside, now it focuses on Doug and Lois, with Mallory pushed aside. Neglected not by the Rileys necessarily, but by the script. Uh, and it really, the change just really just kind of hits you, know, like, and not in a good way either. I find it really, they, if they just maintain the focus of all three characters, us, you know, simultaneously, and it hasn't been done in many films, don't give me an excuse that it hasn't. Uh, then you know, again, you gotta, you, you gotta, you gotta have the proper adjustments to make that work. Now, Gandolfini um, really just uh, does a great job playing Doug here. It's, he's a fascinating study in sadness and loneliness. Now I know he'll never escape the Tony Soprano label. He'll always be seen as that, but he is uh, really good uh, in this role here, and I think he's a really good actor. Uh, it's just a simple, it's just a simple glance at him to just you feel devastating. And uh, Stewart's role is um, more limited, consisting, um, you know, of, of rage and hurt, but she does it really well. Mallory's not sure what to do with her feelings. And um, again, Lois is really just 
as sullen as you can get in a character here and is lonely and Leo does a great job and she just has the expression for it as well. Now Stewart has been great in films, uh, better than the one note uh, role of Bella in Twilight, in the Twilight films. Stewart has been terrific in, in The Runaways, Yellow Handkerchief and I think we'll have a bright future once Bella reaches her expiry date which cannot happen a moment too soon, let me tell you that right now. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yes, I angered the Twilight fans again. Uh, but um, too often we were taken out of the story, and that really just hurts it. But luckily for Scott, the, the, the performances here are so good, it makes Welcome to the Rileys more satisfying than it has any right to be. So I give Welcome to the Rileys three stars out of five.